of this meeting is that at the end of showing you what I do, the principles I apply to my business, the aim is that you would also apply the same principle and begin to have a productive business. So the money making formula, we're trying to make sure you put you you set your your priorities right. So we're trying to make sure you the principles that are guiding your daily decisions are properly in place so that you would be profitable in whatever you are doing so that even after year on earth you would still be relevant in the world to come all right so the aim is not just for us to go and get money at all costs and lose our soul no no so that is why we are talking about money making formula so a christian is you know is instructed to work for their money all right but however from scripture there are certain guidelines that prohibit a, a, a believer from getting money in some certain ways okay so we're going to talk about a lot of that today one of them is what i'll call one of them is what i would call okay so see the way i would put it christians are prohibited from getting money in a way that you don't exchange value except someone decides to favor you but if you say you are doing business with somebody and the person pays you it must be an exchange of value all right so a christian is prohibited from engaging in betting for example prohibited from engaging in fraud for example in stealing simply because you are getting money from illegal method the illegal way is that for example let's talk about you know betting for example which is very popular betting for example you will now be living on chance. You will be saying, oh, this thing, you know, you are now, your life is now on chance. You are no longer trusting God for your help. You are no longer trusting God for your need. Then you are creating a risk that was not there. Putting money, and if the money goes, you feel pain because you were creating a risk that was not there. All right, so, but this is not, I'm not going to talk a lot about that today. Okay, all right, so I'm not gonna talk about so much of that today, but let me quickly go to what we have so we don't waste so much time. But when we have questions, I will definitely attend to that. So um, let's get started. Money-making formula. If you are a 21st century business person, there are certain skills you must have. At this stage, you should be able to operate a laptop. When I mean operate a laptop, not just watch movies. When I mean operate a laptop, not just go and play movies. There are certain things that are required. First of all, you should be able to use basic softwares. So first, you should be able to type. First of all, you should be able to type very well. Even if you're not, if you're unable to type very fast, even if you are unable to type very fast, but you should know the layout of the keyboard. You should be able to, you know, take your eyes away from the keyboard and be able to maneuver your way. So typing is an important skill for, you know, typing on the computer, not on your mobile phone. Okay? So on your, on your phone, I know it is easy. Typing on a computer is an important skill for a 21st century business person, whether you are working under somebody or whether you are working for yourself, because there are times that will come where you, because your business is going to grow, where you will need to type, where you will need to put some things down on your computer or anything at all. So make sure you know how to type. Make sure you know how to use softwares like the Microsoft Word. Make sure you know how to, so use, you know, Microsoft, maybe um, um, Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint. You should know how to use PowerPoint. The reason is that, for example, if you are going to pitch 
your part your your maybe for example your 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 maybe as a fashion designer you want to present a business idea to to the government you want the government to join you in a business you want them to fund it you want them to sponsor a project maybe you thought about okay let's let's do um let's say um fashion awareness you know for schools like i'm just saying for a fashion designer for example maybe you want you know that's Afri you want people to you know because of right now the modern the modern um the western culture is already taking over the african culture so in terms of dress code in terms of our you know the clothes we wear people will prefer to buy a gucci shirt you know than to buy our locally made ankara and all of that so you might say okay let i want to propose a a business plan to the government yes but as of now you don't have somebody that is that, that that you have dedicated that particular task of you know handling your typing handling all those things so you need to have that skill because even if you have somebody that types for you for example these slides I, I have here somebody did it for me but i had to adjust it to my taste there were certain things i did not like right i just arranged them removed some things added some things you should be able to know at least one or two I will not say be a professional in these things, but have this skill. You know, make sure you know know that you know the first time you'll be opening, you know, uh, um, the first time you'll be opening um, the Microsoft PowerPoint, for example, will be when you have a contract. You should know your way around it. Just know some basic things. Design. So if you are going to present that proposal to the government, you have to you know you have to design your presentation. You have to draw out a proposal. You have to bring, you know, so there are some skills you need. You need to know your way around Microsoft Word, and your way around, you know, PowerPoint, you know, your way around maybe do some basic typing, know how to type. Then another skill you must have is that you must know how to use your email. Some days ago, I did a job for a client and the person, after I did the job, I sent the, 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 the final result to the person's email. The person called me. No, the person called me like hours later. I have not seen this thing. You've not sent it to me. I said, I sent it to your email. He said, why didn't you call me? I was like, why, why, why should I call you when you have an email? I've sent it to your email. You should get the notification. You should be able to check your email just like you check your WhatsApp. You should check your email if you have serious business you do with your emails. But however, know how to use email, know how to, you know, you don't just send an email without, you know, heading, without a subject, without a proper layout, without signature. You know, there, there are certain ways you need to be able to send, because if you're going to send an email to a big client, except you don't, except you're not praying for your, for your business to be that big. If you're praying and hoping and believing and working towards making your business bigger than it is right now, then you have to be prepared. Because as an entrepreneur, when you are the head of your business, uh, you, you have to know a thing or two about every department. Except you begin to employ people to handle that department. So as an entrepreneur, you are your secretary, you are your publicity manager, you are everything. So, you know, I was trying to tell us the difference between being self-employed and being employed yesterday. So as an entrepreneur, you are supposed to know things about, you know, these different areas. So know how to use email. Don't just, you know, I know a lot of us will not have email today, if not that it is compulsory for your Android phones. Your Android phones, you need an email. If not, you cannot download apps. So because of that, we have emails. But no, know how to reply emails. Know how to type your email. Know how to design when you are in the email platform. All right? It is one of the skill set that you should have. Okay? So another skill set I feel everybody should have is using social media so i'm going to talk more about this later on but there's another direction of skill set i want to talk about which is generally on skills on business ideas for a 21st century person all right so right now we are trying to make sure because the world is becoming a global village 
you'll be so surprised if you'll be so surprised if you are if you are shown where many of your mobile phones are developed where they are where they are where they are designed and created or you'll be so surprised maybe some maybe your biro that you use when you see the factory how they started all right so if your eye is in the global market if you have a you have a projection to reach out to the global market there are certain skills you must have there are certain skills which is the skill set i'm talking about marketing and all of that we're going to talk about that later all right so you should be ready to become a 21st century business person don't just be like the old school people that we have that I'll just get a shop, I'll rent, I'll pay, and then I will open my shop and put my banner outside. That is it. And then tell my family members. And then maybe post only on my WhatsApp status. And that is all. How many people do you have on your WhatsApp? And then what do you really post on your WhatsApp? You, sh you should think about that. Because your WhatsApp, I'm, I'm okay that yes, you post your business on your WhatsApp. But you know the way WhatsApp is? WhatsApp is a closed group. If somebody doesn't have your contact, the person will never see your WhatsApp status. So you are as well sending the same thing over and over again to people that you have on your contact list that also have you on their contact list. So it is not a wide audience. So if you post on WhatsApp every day, it does not mean you are reaching out to a wide audience. You are reaching out to the same audience over and over again. So if from that your audience, your potential clients are just 2%, it will never increase. It's still 2%. Except any of them refer someone to you. But there is no possibility for you to engage with a new person from your WhatsApp status. So, but we're going to talk more about that later. But I want to tell us some skills I feel we should venture into. All right, some skills we should learn. Because this 21st century, there are some skills that are selling more than others. Okay, one of them is website design, graphics design. UI design, photo editing, even this, for, for example, a fashion designer, you should also learn how to design, like design in terms of sketches, how to draw sketches. You should also learn that. You can also be doing that for people. Do you, do you know that, you know, there are a lot of big artists in Nigeria that people write songs for them. Yes, they can't write songs by themselves because every time, maybe they are busy with so much management that they are unable to do it for themselves. For example, I edit for people online. There are people that, you know, I edit their pictures for them. Why are they unable to edit for themselves? One, maybe they don't know how to do it. Number two, maybe they don't have the chance, they don't have the time. So, added to your skill, you also need to be able to do something that can sell to anybody in the world. I know a fashion designer. I know like, okay, I know like two fashion designers in Benin that I've, I've shot for and the clothes were not sold in Benin. The clothes were sold overseas. They made the clothes here, took the pictures of them, they sent it to them there and they shipped the, the clothes abroad. That's where they sold them and they made good money from it. So you can begin to think how your business is going to grow and then you can also involve in other skills that can sell anywhere. So you can, you know, if you are, if I, if you are, if you are a musician, for example, engage into songwriting a lot, or engage into music production, so that when you get a particular business that will require that particular service, you can render it and get the money. You shouldn't just stay on one skill. I think that was what Pastor Gosby was saying yesterday. Jack of all trade. You you don't necessarily have to be a jack of all trade, but the skills around what you are doing as a makeup artist learn photo editing learn how to photograph how to snap even if you are not doing it as a full-time photographer but learn how to take your pictures well you'll be so surprised that you start earning from training that people will come and meet you and want to learn you are not you are not doing it of you know as a business but you are doing it as training and you are making money from it all right, so these are some things. Maybe we'll talk more about it later because um, 
we need to do the major thing we came here for, all right? Which are the principles that will make you make money, that will make your business productive, all right? So maybe we'll come over to the skill sets for the 21st century business person later on, okay? So we're talking about business principles of business, making your business productive with these business principles. So number one principle you must know is that you make money by solving problems. If you don't want to solve problem, then you are not ready to make money. You make money by solving problem. So if you want to make money, the formula is that find a problem to solve. Find a problem. When I started my studio inside the school, I told you there was no studio inside school. And this is an environment where people like pictures. But there are many guys that, you know, they can just snap you on that tree, snap you somewhere. But I know people like something creative. So I had to solve the problem by bringing a studio there. Solve problems. Solve problems. You have to solve problems if you are going to make money. So money is not the aim first. Look for a problem. Let that, your, that problem solving be your priority. You will see that money will come. Find the problem. So begin to think, what, what, what are the things you don't like? Maybe, for example, maybe, for example, you discover that, oh, you don't like the way WhatsApp is. Or, you know, maybe there are certain functions that are supposed to be there that is not there. You're already thinking of, and people, you feel people will want that kind of function. So you're not thinking of, how do I solve this problem? Because this is a problem. So when Zoom came out, Zoom came out some years ago, like four years or five years ago, all right? So when they came out, Skype, because ahead, I think I'll just quickly say this. Make sure you also research about people's business, how the business started, what they did. You know, those things will give you an idea on what to do about your business. Research about big companies, about companies, how they started. So you don't just, see, you learn from people's mistake. If you want to learn from your own mistake, it will take you a longer time to get to the finish line. Learn from people's mistakes. So go and research about other people's business. Research about how Google started. Research about how Zoom started, how WhatsApp started, how Facebook started. When you research about them, you will discover that you will learn a thing or two from their, you know, what they applied that will make your own productive. So what did Zoom do? When Zoom came out, there was already Skype by Microsoft Skype. All right, so but how come this corona period, Zoom is more popular than Skype? What does is, what is Zoom do? Zoom solved the problem. Number one problem was internet connection. Zoom did their software in a way that even if your internet is not so fast, you will still be able to communicate. Another thing Zoom did was that they made, they reduced the lagging time that if I talk now, the time you will hear it over there is a very short time, shorter than what Skype will give you. Then they made it easy for people to join and see each other. So there were so many functions they put that, you know, Skype did not have. They were solving a problem and people wanted that. So you should ensure that you are solving a problem. So what problem is your business solving? What problem is your business solving? You see some kind of designs people are making and you don't like, like people, pe people will put things about you, maybe the way they brand their, their, their business, it's not looking proper. Solve that problem by bringing out amazing designs, amazing branding identities that will make their business sell. You don't know that people can, can see a logo and because of the logo, they want to do business with that company. It is possible if you decide to solve the problem by making such designs that will attract people. All right? Somebody came up with TikTok. And today, TikTok is the main place. TikTok is busier, is busier than Twitter and Instagram today. 
is busier because a lot of content are entering TikTok. TikTok, people are just there watching videos and laughing. But someone came up with the idea that was different from what was already existing. Trust me, there is no new idea. Our ideas are just an advanced, a modified one. So take something from this. Look at what people are doing. Add to it and form your own. Solve a problem. That is how you will make money. So number two, develop yourself first. This is one part that a lot of people have issues. They want to go straight into making money when they have not developed themselves. You cannot make money if you haven't developed yourself. You know, it is very, it is very offensive to see a lot of Christians that they are the ones that are unable to deliver where. I've had complaints from people that, hey, this person said in my church that he is a plumber. I gave him work to come and do, you know, to come and um, fix pipe in my house. And the, the guy did not do it well. And we're in the same church. I cannot do anything about it. Most of us, the reason why we don't have money is because our skill is not good. If your skill is good, anybody that patronizes you today, we want to come back tomorrow if the person requires the service. Because you develop yourself. Make sure you are the best of yourself. Make sure you develop yourself. So I told you guys that one of the targets I had, you are going to talk about target later, one of the targets I have when I started my photography was that when you mention photography in Benin, when you just mention it, I want my name to follow. I want my name to be called. I want my name to, to appear. So if I must get to that point, it's not about, you know, painting my name around Benin. The way I will paint my name in the heart of people that they will never forget is to give them a photograph that when they put that picture, you know, online, they will be excited and people will good, give them good comments. There was one thing I noticed when I started my photography. When I, snap, when I snap a picture for you, when you upload that picture, that picture gets more likes than any picture you had before. I followed it up for a long time before I stopped. Anybody that tags me, I'll go and check the person's picture after a day. Go and check previous picture. I will see that it has more like. If it doesn't have more like, I'll be praying, God, no, this picture, this picture, bring more awareness. I want the person to be able to notice that, hey, this picture has more like than all my previous pictures. But you will not know. All right, so you must make sure you develop yourself. Make sure your skill is, see, as a, as a, as a believer, because I believe all of us are believers. If you're not, um, you, I think you would, you'll be doing yourself a lot of harm by not being a Christian because you'll be losing out from a lot of benefits that are added to the Christian faith. So you are welcome to join us. So, um, as I was saying, you should have a target of being the best of a particular skill in your environment. We are not trying to compete. We are saying develop yourself. Let people see your skill and say, yes, this person is good. And even when they say it, don't stop working on yourself. Make sure you develop yourself. Make sure you work on yourself. I told myself that because some year, you know, two years ago when I, when I started, okay, two years ago, you know, at my beginning stage of photography, I noticed a photographer who resides in Abuja traveled to London to go and shoot a wedding. Traveled all the way from Abuja to London to cover a wedding. So I said, God, since photography can carry people on a plane abroad, photography will carry me on a plane. But you will hear the story very soon. All right? So, but for me to get to that level is that I have to develop myself. See, if the governor of Edo State calls me to snap him today, he will not be disappointed. Um, I, I promise you, he will not be disappointed. If the president of Nigeria calls me for a photo shoot today, he will not be disappointed because I have developed myself. 
and I'm still developing myself. So when he calls me, I will still make sure I do some research before I get to where he is. So by the time I'm doing that photo shoot, by the time I'm editing the photo, I'm learning new things to make sure I deliver the best. So develop yourself. That is what we keep people coming to you. That is what will even make people refer you. Nobody will talk about your business if your business is not good. When you present your business, they don't say, ah, no, 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 no. I know at the beginning stage, you might not be getting it where there are people here that when I started my photography, they know how the pictures were looking. But they know I did not stop because every time there was something different, my pictures were changing. So whatsoever skill you are doing, make sure you develop yourself. So how you develop yourself will be number one, to learn, to research, invest in knowledge. You can't develop yourself if you are not researching, if you are not reading up things. There are photographers that when you talk, when, when, you, come, when you have a conversation with them, they will not talk like photographers. They, are, they will talk like normal laymen. They will talk like people that don't know anything about photography. They don't even know how to use photography terms, you know, when they are talking, when they are... No. If you're a fashion designer, be able to speak fashion language. Because as a medical doctor, you know that they will teach you the medical terms. As an engineer, they will teach you the engineering terms. As a lawyer, they will teach you the, the law terms. All right? So the, this, the, the way they speak, you should be able to talk like that. Let people hear from your conversation that this person is this person. So invest into knowledge. Go on, on YouTube. Go on different blogs. Read up things. Number two, way you should develop yourself is to practice. Don't say you are developing yourself because you are reading 1,000 books every day about what the skill you have. If you don't practice it, then there's no use. You are not developing yourself. Because it's one thing to read it and have it in your head. It's another thing to practice it. You might, you might read or you might watch somebody, you know, you might watch a makeup video and you saw how they did the makeup and you say, ah, that thing, was, that thing was easy. Go and try it and see whether it is easy. Until you try it and you get it right, you have not developed, you have not improved. So number two thing to develop yourself is to practice. Number three is to feed your eyes with good works. Feed your eyes. As a graphics designer, look at other graphics, other graphics design from other professionals, other people. Look at their designs. Look at what they did. Look at what, how they use overlay, how they use colors, how they use the, you know, the, what they call visual hierarchy. What is your attention going to when you look at the graphics? As a web developer, look at other people's website. Study it as a web developer. Don't just study as a stranger, like, oh, this thing is fine, I'm past. No, no. As a fashion designer, look at other people's design. Look at what they did. Look at fashion magazines. Look at other things. Feed your eyes on good works, on good products, things that people have done before. As a singer, listen to good music. As an instrumentalist, listen to sounds from other people. As a producer, listen to other sounds from other people. That is how you will develop. The idea of, I'm, I'm alone, I'm, I want to do my own unique way. I want to, no, it will, ne see. <laughs> it will never work that way. That person you are talking about, maybe you are looking at, a lot of us will be looking at Kelechi Amadi Obi as one of the, you know, top photographers, T.Y. Bello was one of the top photographers in Nigeria. You will be surprised that when they want to do a photo shoot, they will still go on Pinterest to look for ideas to do photo shoots. You think the photo shoot you will copy from their page, they got it originally from their brain. No, most of them also looked at a reference. So three things I've just told you to develop yourself so that you can make money. Number one, invest in knowledge, pay for seminars, buy books, read things in that area because you are doing it as a job, as a work, as something very important. Read about it. Even as a cleaner, read about cleaning. You will realize that when you do, when you do cleaning professionally, 
God can remove you from that little office you are, and you'll be the one cleaning the, you know, the government house. You think cleaning the government house is the same amount with cleaning somewhere that you have, maybe like an office that you are cleaning. See, not every one of us have to, you know, be in the big name. Everybody has their level. Everybody has. So if you are passionate, I know of someone that was so passionate about security. The person started reading books on security. And today he has a security firm. Do you know where his security works? The security is the one in charge of securities for some banks. Is the one in charge of securities for some government officials when they are traveling. Is the one in charge of securities for some white people, some you know foreigners when they come to Nigeria. Someone thought of it, security business. So any business you are doing can grow bigger than you are thinking. I read of a story how someone that was selling was it Akara or something like that or Moimoy that the person that Moimoy brought the person to the White House. So God can take you anywhere, anytime, all right? But if you have the skill, you will not disgrace him, so he will take you. But when you don't have the skill, God will not give you some opportunities. He will allow them pass because you will go and spoil your... Because when you go to a place and you're unable to deliver, do you know that they can never, ever accept you again? It will take a lot of effort for they will accept you. But if you have never been there... They may accept you, they may consider you. But if you have come before and you spoilt it, then things will go bad. So develop yourself by investing in knowledge. Research about what you are doing. If you want to be a speaker, a motivational speaker, or you know, you can research about it. Research about it. There are people that are earning money from talking to people. There are some people that are, they are, they are, they are customer care. Being a customer care, what it requires is your voice. Know how to speak good English, good voice. So you don't know that that is also a job you can do. All right? So make sure you research, you research about the particular business you are doing. Research. Research. Read about it. Study. Go, um, go for seminars. You know, watch videos, what read books, and all of that to develop yourself. Now, number two, I said practice. Practice. Make sure you don't just look at things and just say, I know it. No. Do it. Let's see if you have gotten it. Do you understand my point? So, the next, I also mentioned what was look at other people's work. Look at others, other people's work. You must do that. Don't look at yourself and just feel you are the best. No. Study other people's work and learn from it. Learn from every other people's work. Learn from their work. Their work will speak volume. As a photographer, when I look at another photographer's work, you are looking at, wow, this girl is fine. Me, I'm looking at, where did this person put the light? How come this background, this skin, this, this? I'm looking at it as, as a photographer and I'm learning, okay, next time what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the person like this. I'll tell the person to pose like this. I'm learning that. So develop yourself. Okay? Start small. Start small. People want to start big. People, people feel like, yes, this business, you know, you're, because of the passion you have, you just want to start any big money at the end of the month. No. Start small. Start small. Start small. Start with the capacity you have. Start, I talked about contentment yesterday. Start small. What you have is you have just, you know, maybe you have just um, one sewing machine and you just have one small shop. Start small. But have a mindset that you will end big. Start small. Just few people started big. I started photography big. But I know of people that started small. Let me tell you one of the benefits of starting small. It's that it gives you, eh, it teaches you contentment. It teaches you to be satisfied. When you start big, when you have any issue, when you lose, maybe you make some losses, it will, go, it will, it will affect you. But when you start small, you would have gotten enough, enough knowledge, enough experience of contentment that nothing can shake you. Start small. Start with what you have. There was one girl that came to meet me that she wants to start photography. 
She doesn't have money, but she's asking people for money. Okay, so what do you want to get in your studio? She started mentioning BB cameras. Started mentioning me, even me. I don't have that money to buy that kind of camera. There's one of my students that came to register. When he registered, you know, we started training him. All of a sudden, this guy just had a desire to have the equipment I have. He started telling the parents to buy the equipment I have. So I told him, guy, start small. Don't be in a hurry. You think I just appeared one day and bought a camera watch X and X Nera? You thought I just woke up one day and bought and maybe rented a big apartment? No, I started small. People that know me, I started in my room, in my house in Ekosodi. I started snapping pictures for free. Then I graduated to 15 Naira per picture. Graduated to 100 Naira per picture. The first pre-wedding pictures I took was 5,000 Naira. I gave them 50 edited pictures with about 400 unedited. And I was excited. I was happy. But now, the story has changed. I will charge you 30K for a pre-wedding and you will get only 10 pictures. The story has changed. Simply because I started small and I grew to this stage. So when people look at other business people and you are trying to build your foundation where the person's roof is, no. No. I have people I'm looking up, I'm looking at other bigger photographers and I cannot charge what they are charging now. I am growing. I am growing. I, I will grow to that point where I can even charge more than what they are charging. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not all about charging, 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 charging. By the time I, if I charge you and I finish snapping your pictures, you will go home excited that you paid me. How many of you have ever, okay, for those of us that have iPhone, do you know that iPhones are more expensive than Android phones? iPhones will give you a, two, a one gig RAM with maybe 32 gig inbuilt memory. They will give you for 90,000 brand new. You will get 100 version of that phone for 30,000 or 50,000 or 60,000. What are you paying for? But yet, when you use an iPhone, you will, you will, you will be happy you are using it. So that is the stage I want to go to. Where even if I'm charging you, you will still be excited that you are working with me because I will deliver better results than what you will see elsewhere. All right? So make sure you start small. Don't just, don't just you know, try and move everything. And, ah, you want to have branches. You have not even started one branch. You want to have branch here. You want to have branch here. You know, you're just, you're just starting your business. You're already putting structure. Okay, you are now my secretary. You are my PA. You are not starting small like that. I know you have passion. You have zeal. You have where you are going to, but start small. When the things are not needed, you cannot... You are just starting a business. The first thing you are doing, you are putting AC in your office. <laughs> when people don't even know the address of that office, you are putting AC. People don't even know where the office is. Start small. Start small. Don't just get PA when you have not started. You already have three phones. You already have, you know, you are just, you are, you are not telling people, this is my business line. You cannot, no. Start small. You have not gone anywhere. Start small. See, business is about relationship. You must value relationship. Business is about relationship. I told us yesterday, wealth is not because you have millions in your account or you have beauties. You have, see, true wealth is that you have, you have favor in the hearts of people. That's true wealth. True wealth is that, as I'm in Benin now, if I want to fly to Abuja, I can call the president and the president will send a private jet and I will fly. Even if I don't own a private jet myself, but I will get a private jet that will carry me for free because of the favor I have with him. That is true wealth. Not the one we are, we are having money in our account. No, that is not the true wealth. The true wealth is that when you need anything, it comes. Whether you have money in your account or not. That is true wealth. And you cannot get that if you don't have relationship. You cannot get that if you have not invested in relationships you have. 
All right. So start small. Start small. So the next point is do a business you love. This is number four. See, a wise man said, do, he said, do a business you love and you will never work any day of your life. If you do something you love, you will never work any day of your life. What does it mean? It means you will be happy waking up to do it. See, when somebody calls me, come and snap, I am happy. Except maybe I'm physically tired. Except that I am excited when it comes to come and edit picture. When it comes to come and snap. When it, I'm excited, do a business you love. So that when you are doing it, money will no longer be your focus. You are doing it for the passion and then money will come freely. But when you are struggling to do the business, you don't like it to, you don't like, the, the name annoys you when they are calling, you know, have you seen some nurses in the hospital? That when you go there to take ejection, they will slap you. Stay where now, go on, go on. stay where now. They are, not, they are doing it because they are looking for money. They are not doing a business they love. If they were doing a business they love, they will welcome you that to take the injection will be, you, you, you will be happy to take the injection. Do a business you love. Do a business you love. I was watching some dancers today on, on, on YouTube, on um, Instagram and YouTube. I was watching their dance move. Like these people, when they are dancing, they are so excited. If you tell them, come and dance, they will dance. Anytime they can dance, do a business you love. Don't do, don't be struggling because you want to push this. This is what is trending. It is trending. I have to, I have to put this thing in my head. I have to make sure because this is what will make me make money. If you are doing things like that, trust me, eh? a time will come, you will get tired because you don't love that bit. If you don't love it, don't do it. You will only be putting yourself in bondage. I'm not saying don't try it. You can try to do it and you see that you keep having this rejection. You don't like it. Leave it. All right? I'm not just saying just quit at the beginning, but try it out. If it's not working, leave it. Do a business you love. When you do it, you will realize that making money will be easy. But when it's a business you don't love, you'll be thinking about how much have I made? Ah, is this business not just suffering me? Am I not just wasting my time? I'm just suffering, yeah. But when it's a business you love, <laughs> sometimes a client will come and their budget will not be up to. But you are so excited. There's someone I know, you know, that the person bakes cake. She likes baking. She likes it. Like that's just whether she bake, whether you want her to book or any. She just like every day she wants to just bake. I know someone that likes cooking every time. I just, you just want to cook. When you do that as a business, it will be easy for you to make money simply because you are doing a business that you love. All right? I hope we got that point. So let's move on to the next. Cut down your expenses and save. Cut down your expenses. This is number five. Cut down your expenses and save. Hmm. This part is very important. All right. Now, I have a few. I have, like I was telling you about someone that was just starting photography or wants to start photography. And the first thing the person is thinking about is trying to get expensive equipment, trying to get maybe. The person will not employ like three staff. You have not started any anything. You already have three staff. You already have PA that you are paying. You already have an official, you know, someone that picks your calls. Those are unnecessary expenses. Buying an AC for an office that people don't know. Until it becomes a necessity, don't get it. Don't buy it. See, when God supplies, there's something the scripture says. He gives bread for food and he gives seed for sowing. Everything that comes to your hand does not mean it is for consumption. Everything that comes to your hand does not mean it is for consumption. So when you get excess money, 
does not mean you should you should increase your expenses no 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 if you just get an alert of 100k ah you plan to eat indomie that night you will not go to chicken republic and buy food i cannot kill myself i can't kill myself wow when you have what they call scale of preference there are some certain things you will not waste your money on you will not spend your money on things you can do without you have no need of having a phone that is expensive that is not doing anything for you all the phone is doing make call it's just make call that's all your phone is not doing business for you i was watching i was watching a video some days ago and then this lady got a gift from a friend because she was asking i want to buy a phone i want to buy a phone the lady got a gift of five hundred thousand. she went to buy iphone 11 Meanwhile, she was owing our strength. She went to buy iPhone 11. Meanwhile, she was owing our strength. You know what she said? She said, if I have this phone now, if I go for a job interview, when they see this phone in my hand, they'll say, wow, this girl is a big girl who will employ her. But meanwhile, she has not paid her house rent. Have a scale of preference. If your data, your data every month, you are not, it's not helping you to make money, it's not helping you to increase in knowledge, it's not helping you to increase spiritually, you are wasting it. You are wasting it. For you to be spending 10,000 naira for data every month, when all you are doing is just to watch YouTube and be laughing, watching comedy and be laughing, that's all. You are wasting your money. It is an expense that you can avoid. That you can avoid have a target all right so cut down your expenses learn to save so uh, i don't know if we know about piggy vest piggy vest is a platform where you can save money if you want to know more about it you can send me a message later you can learn to save save you can save you can do what they call um, piggy bank which is automatic saving you can save automatically every day or every week or every month depends on your preference save there are two reasons why you should save two reasons i okay i for one these are the two reasons i save number one i save because i have extra fund i have excess fund or maybe after cutting down on my expense after arranging all i'm going to spend the remaining fund i save all right then number two i save for projects i save for projects oh i'm going to buy this thing at the end of the month so i'm saving up this money for that save save there are some times that some deals may come that if you have a hundred thousand you will claim it but when you don't have that money You'll be unable to do, you know. I was, you know, I know someone that went to youth service. The person came back from youth service after the 12 months. The person saved 10,000 naira from 18k every month. But meanwhile, there are some people that they went to serve, they spent the 18k, their parents still sent them money, they exhausted everything every month. Maybe our, their locations were different because of that, maybe expenses or anything. But if you learn the, if you have the culture, the habit of saving and investing, you would find it easy to make money. Some of us, it's not that we did not make more money this year, it's that our expenses also increased. So because of that, it looked as though we did not make money. Some of us, the month we make 100k and the month we make 200k, we don't see the difference simply because as the money is coming, the money is going out. Cut down on your expenses. Don't just put on your jail and be watching movie, wasting your foil. Except you have more than enough to spare. Cut down on your expenses and learn to save. Learn to invest. As Pastor Dilly have said, learn to invest. 
Learn to invest your money. Invest in good businesses. All right? So, for example, there, there might be business around you that people may need for, for their business to grow. Make sure the person is trustworthy. Make sure the business, you have proof that your money is secured. You can invest your money. So the next is have plans, budgets, and targets. Have plans, budgets, and targets. Have plans. Have plans. All right? I'm not really an expert in the field of, you know, business in terms of all these their terminologies and different, you know, maybe someone might be here that knows a lot about, you know, business and knows the different plans, targets. I may be putting the definitions, mixing them up, but get the point. Jesus said, who wants to build a house that will not first settle down and count the cost? When it counts the cost, we know if he has enough money. But if he doesn't, he will start building and discover that the money he had was, was only going to take the house to the roof level, and that's all. So plan. Make plan. Have business plan. Have business plan. When you are planning your business, you, have, you, need a, you, need, you need to have a target that, oh, I want to have, let me say, I want to generate a revenue of 100000 Okay, let's just say 200,000 at the end of the year. So divide it into 12 and say, oh, I need a minimum of, let's say, 20,000 at, at the end of every month. So how do I generate 20,000? It means that, oh, I need to make sure I do five business transactions at least to be able to get 20,000. So you, you need a plan. So when you are taking jobs for that month, you know your target is maybe 100,000 for that month. You have done first two, three, you have done 20 transactions and you have gotten 99. You will not stop. Have target, have plans. Have budgets. Now yes, for my expenses, I'm going to spend 10,000 Naira a month. 10,000 Naira is going to cover for the light bill and for maybe water. Have budgets or transportation. Have budgets, have plans, so that your money, you, you will not, let them not be asking where's your money and you cannot find it. Tell yourself, okay, I want 10 new clients. Just like you are very diligent when you want to go and win souls. Be diligent when you want to go and get clients. Your clients will not come and look for you, look for them. I know of a guy that started laundry business. And when the guy started, you know what the guy did? He went around banks, meet them. I'm a, laund I'm, 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 I'm a laundry guy. I can help you do your laundry, pick up your clothes here and bring it to you within two days. My services are very affordable. I can do, you know, I can give you 50% discount now so that I can show you that, yes, I can do it very well. Have, look for your client, have budgets. Have plans, have targets for the number of clients you want, the number of transactions you want, the money you want at the end of the month. It can exceed it, it can go below it, but it will position your mind that you will actively engage to meet up to that thing. But when you just do it anywhere but left face, let it come as it is, anyhow it happens, I will just do it. Then you will not be doing the right thing. It will be difficult for God to supply simply because. You are not faithful with money. Have plans. You are not faithful with your business. Have plans. Have targets. Have budgets. Divide your money. Okay. 10% or let's say 20%, I'm going to save it. 10%, I'm giving it out to, you know, to my family. Maybe my younger brother is in school or maybe anybody. You understand? 50% I'm taking it back to my business to invest, you know, like that. Share it. I have a friend that when the money comes, the money, she shares it. She has an account where she gives, the money she gives to people, the widow, the, she has an account she gives to people. So when the money comes at the end of the month, as she receives her, her salary, let's say 50K, 
maybe the money that's supposed to go to the the one that she uses for um give reaching out 5k she will transfer it to that account the one she has for giving to giving to uh, maybe the one she also has one for her health just in case because she has she's not so she's not so um strong in terms of her immune system so she falls sick easily so she has an account she puts money for that then she has a project to buy books and be reading so she has an account for that then she has an account she saves savings is savings don't touch it you shouldn't go and be using your savings to go and buy food except there's no other way there's no other option respect your savings do you understand what i'm saying so make sure you have plans find the best way you can share your money so that you don't miss them up some of you what you have to do is that you have to separate your business account from your personal account what you need to do is to destroy the atm card the uh, uh, the atm card to that your bank account destroy it and then you will have your own personal account when you have when you have business use that your business at that your account to receive money then transfer your own portion at the end of the month be paying yourself salary maybe that is one way some of us can be able to arrange money properly better still register your business and get a corporate account but the thing with corporate account is that you're going to be paying a lot of taxes so but if you're unable to afford that at the moment you can use your individual account for now before your business grows to the level where you can now get a corporate account and be paying taxes so make sure you have plans you have budget so the next go to the next um learn to use technological tools to your advantage technological tools to your advantage technology has brought to us different new inventions that we can use to advantage you would be surprised that i met most in fact most of my clients most of my clients get to see my work on instagram before they patronize me most not all i know of a i know of a, a fashion designer there was one fashion designer that is related to me i went to make i went to meet her to make some clothes when i went there to make some clothes you know i because she had to take my measure, measurements and all of that so i asked her for designs that i don't have design samples i have you know in mind that she should show me what to choose from. So she showed me her phone. She showed me a lot of pictures from her phone. But it got me thinking that if I was in her shoes, what would I have done differently to make sure I am not the regular normal? Because that's what every fashion designer will do for you. They will show you on their phone. But do you know you can become a value designer that has something different? Where you have your Instagram page, where there are a lot of work that you did with your logo on it when i see some kind of pictures some people take see one of the one of the things you should learn to use is knowing how to use your phone camera because this is for people that you have business that you you need your phone to capture it it's not every time you'll be paying a photographer to come and snap for you a cake designer came to meet me some days ago she said she wants me to photograph some cake she's baking so when i told her the amount i said if i charge you well eh the money you pay me eh i can use it to buy one cake from you simply because i will be charging you a lot so i now showed her some instagram page of some other cake designers that uses their phone and if you see the way their pictures looked it will look as though someone used the camera learn how to use a good phone if you don't have a good phone see there was something i used to do then there's somebody i know okay you, you, she also does that then when she didn't have a good phone she will call a friend that has a good phone please come to me he, he will bribe you give you mineral give you something come you will use your phone snap the pictures very well and transfer it to your to her phone take good pictures that will represent your brand learn how to use technological tools to your advantage learn how to use your phone camera there are pictures you can take with your phone it will it will look very good learn how to edit pictures with your phone 
Learn how to do that. Learn how to use Instagram to your advantage. Learn how to use Facebook to your advantage. Learn how to use your Instagram to your advantage. Learn how to talk to people. Learn how to greet. Learn how to, you know, address people. Avoid using things, shortcuts, KK. You are discussing with a client. You want to spell please. You are writing PLS, PLS as please. Learn how to talk well. Communication, I'm going to talk, that, talk about that very soon. Learn how to use technological tools. Get a website. <laughs> I started my website, you know, I started using my website since last year. I told some photographers, get a website. Do you know what they told me? They said, have you gotten any major client from your website? <laughs> and then I laughed. I don't need to get a major client for my website. What is my website for majorly? My website is my portfolio. When you go there, you will see my work. When you go there, you can get my contact. My website is my portfolio. And when I was, you know, it was, I, I, I think when I, did, when I did a photo shoot for Uber, at that time, I didn't have a website. I wish I had a website. But one of the things I knew when I worked with Uber was how to design receipts, how to design what they call invoice. Invoice. When you do, all right, I'm going to talk about that. So when you do a transaction with somebody, some of them may, some of them may, may require you to give them an invoice. See, the old school way is that you go and meet a graphic designer and he will design a you know design something that you will print or you go and buy booklets. The one they design is even more professional than the booklet you go and buy. You go and buy booklets and you you know you will now be writing their name and you tear it. So let me ask you, some of you, how many of your receipts for the items you bought you still have with you? But if I ask you, if maybe, for example, you bought your, your phone from Jumia, if I ask you for the invoice they sent to you, you can still provide it from your email. So learn how to design invoice and send to clients. Clients that may require it. Because when you work with a big client, when you work with the government, for example, you cannot do a transaction with them. Let's say the transaction was six million naira, And you will just say, you know, receipts. No invoice, no properly designed invoice, not the one that you just design a proper invoice. You can have a physical one and also have a digital one for. Yes, yes, you can use Paystack to generate quick invoice. That's true. You can learn how to use Paystack, you can learn how to use, there are some tools. You can learn how to use invoice. Dot, dot, invoice dot, me invoice me dot dot o or something like that there's one website invoice me you can use that website and you can design invoice get a website if need be website is your portfolio when you are going to do business with serious people eh, they will not ask you for your instagram handle and do you know where those people will come you don't know you have to be prepared do you know how much it costs me to run my website? Hundreds of thousands every year. Hundreds of thousands for maintenance, for data, for, for renewal of different two, uh, uh, plugins and things I have there. Every year, hundreds of thousands. But I cannot point to one client I got there, but I know many clients that I refer to that place. And they took me more serious when they knew I had a website. So your portfolio, it depends on where you are going to. Because me, I have a target to reach out to bigger clients. Clients that are bigger than the regular people I will see every day. Clients that will be ready to pay me in millions. And those clients, sometimes they will require you to have a website. So I'm learning and I have a website now. I'm developing my web, making sure my website, revamping it, adding new things, adding new features to make sure my website is good enough. All right? So learn how to use technological tools to your advantage. 
Yeah, there's a there's a there's there's a platform called Mailchimp. Mailchimp. Learn how to use Mailchimp to send emails. Learn how to get people's email. Let them, you know, depends on your business though. There are some business that may not require emails, okay? So but I'm just trying to talk generally. So you pick the one that relates to you. Learn so, but WhatsApp is general to every one of us. Learn how to put catching headings, headings, subjects that will make people think. See, learn about what they call copyright. Copyright is not like copyright in terms of someone that owns right, you know, the right over a particular thing. No, I'm talking about copywriting. The ability for you to write something, eh, and somebody will want to engage in that thing. Some people they can they can sell, they can sell what you don't want to you from the way they talk, from the way they can write some certain things. Another thing about marketing you should know is that people like free things. So you cannot do without giving free things. A guy chatted me up, I want to sell my lots, simply because he saw me selling lots. And he saw that, yes, I was selling a lot from my lot. So he was thinking maybe, yes, he created some lots, 20 lots, and I saw the works, they were not so good. But however, the first thing this guy is thinking is that he wants to sell. He said, can he give me, I will split the profit 50-50%. So I, I went to meet him. I told him, I, okay, I, I, we chatted on Instagram. I sent him voice note. I said, you need to learn about business. Nobody will answer you if they don't trust you. Before I can sell lots today, it's because I have done free retouching class and people have seen it that this person knows what he's doing. I have edited other photographers' picture and presented it, and they know that, ah, this person knows what he's doing. I can't just come up one day, I'm selling something free. If a celebrity wants to sell anything today, even if that thing doesn't make sense, it will sell. Why? They have the audience. Grow your audience. Grow your audience. So that was what I told the guy. You don't just need to just be in a hurry. I want to make money. When I was even going to sell my lot, I gave her five for free. One of my friends that is also a photographer called me that he wants to organize he wants to organize class. He wants to organize uh, you know photography class that uh, he needs idea on what to do. You know, he wants to know how much is you charge. I said, brother, the way I'm looking at you, don't charge any money. Do free of charge and even give them lunch. Do one day or two days free class. When you do that, People will come because it is free. People like free things. When they come, when you sell yourself and they know that this person knows what he's doing, the next day you come and you say, I want to charge money for this thing. People will pay. Why? They trust you. If you don't have audience that trust you, you cannot sell anything. Give discounts. People are just receiving your emails every time. You are not, give discounts. If, you, if somebody sees a WhatsApp broadcast and say, you know, maybe your particular service, you are giving 50% off. When they see that kind of thing, they want to grab it. When they get that 50% off and when they see the work that they like it, the next time they will pay for the bigger one. I gave my lot free of charge to people and people came back to pay for the, for, for the ones I was selling. They came back to pay for it simply because I understood what marketing is about. Don't just be in a hurry to just make money. See, making money is not a get rich quick scheme at all. If you want to get rich quick, don't need to follow all these my principle. Go and do something else. God is not interested in making somebody a millionaire overnight. That's not, he can do it, but it's not what we build you to become solid, to become strong. What will make you strong is that you will follow the process. God wants to build people he can trust. People that wealth cannot steal their heart. So don't be in a hurry to make money. Gradually, you will begin to make the money. Just be focused, be content, be consistent. So, learn about marketing. There are a lot of things about marketing I will not have the time to talk about right now. So, but let's move on to the next. Number, number nine, learn about customers and human relations. 
Learn about customers and human relations. See, these principles I'm giving to you people, they are principles that is, they are sure ways of making money. They are not fast to, but they are sure that if you abide by these things, you will make money. And by the time you are making money, you will not even be thinking about money because you will be so in love with what you are doing. You will be so in love with being of impact and value to people that you will not be thinking about how much is in your account. So learn about customers and human relations. They are different people. They are, do, you know, they are different ways people react to things. Just try, there's a book uh, by Tim Lahaye, Why You Act the Way You Do. When you read that book, don't just read that book and say, wow, good book, good book, good book. No, read it to understand that there are some people that are not like you. So you might meet, for me, I meet different clients. Today I will meet a client that is bossy, that wants to boss me around. And me, I'm the type that I don't like people that are bossy because naturally, me, I am this bossy person. So when somebody wants to boss over me, ah, I always have this class. So I'm learning humility. So you will learn about people. Learn and understand why people do some certain things they do. When they act the way they act. Don't just get angry and close transactions with them. Try and make sure you are the good books of your clients. When you do a particular service for them, they are not satisfied and they want, you know, try and understand, okay, what do you want me to do? What should I do again for you? Okay, okay, know what they want and do it for them. Learn to apologize to your clients. You are sorry, you are sorry. I'm not saying I'm perfect in these things I'm telling you guys simply because I'm also human like you. All right? So these are the right things and I am also learning to do them. Human relation is how you relate to people. How you relate to people. See, one of the things I, I, you know, for example, you know what marketing does, okay? There's something I want to talk about now. You know what marketing does? Marketing gives you opportunity to get new clients. But you also need to learn about customer, how to retain the clients you have. You shouldn't be getting new clients and the old ones are disappearing. In order to keep your clients from, you know, keep your clients coming back, one of the things you need to do is give them gifts. One of the things you need to do is maybe have some special package. You might tell them that, okay, sorry, I'm always using fashion designs. <laughs> maybe as a fashion designer, you know, if the person is doing more, if the person is making more clothes, you will give a discount. And you let them know that it's a see one of the things I want to teach you guys so that you will know. Eh? If you're going to charge, let's say, one thousand naira for a particular service, this is Nigeria. This is Nigeria. Don't tell your clients one thousand. If you tell your clients one thousand, everybody wants discount. They will you you they will price. And you will now do it for 800. And maybe at 800, you'll be going below your production costs. So the best thing to do is charge 1.5, for example, or 1.3, for example, so that you can now tell them, don't just say, tell them that I am giving you this discount of 300, so pay 1,000. It's a strategy to work with clients. When they hear that, yes, this person gave me discount. They will be happy. Do you understand? So if you're charging for photography for wedding and your wedding package is 500000 and that is what, if you charge 500000 that is the most stable price for you. Then charge 5500 uh, Sorry, 5, uh, 550000 or five five hundred eighty thousand. So that when you do discount, because I've often seen some people will add you know, too much amount to what they charge. It will make people run. So make sure it's not too much. 
And when someone, when you talk to a client, and the client, you know, says, ah, your price is too expensive, you now ask them, what did you, what, what were you budgeting? What do you have in mind? And when they tell you, then you cannot tell them that, oh, okay, what about if I give you a little discount so that we can be business, so that we can be business uh, uh, colleagues, so that we can be friends, so that we can do business together. So you can, you can offer discounts. You can offer gifts. You know, there are some clients that you know. These clients, they might not come as Snapple, but they're always bringing people, bringing people, bringing people. For that, their work of doing referring, give them gifts. Because ah, your friends will tell you, ah, how, did you how did you know about us? Try and know where your client came from. That will also tell you how your marketing is going. Don't just assume that, oh, this guy first he just stumbled on me. Oh, how did you find my page? Uh, my friend, I saw my friend that you did, you, you snapped that picture. You will know what you are doing to get clients. So, if, for example, this person is always referring people to you, even if the person doesn't come to your studio to snap, it is wise. Honor the person, like I told us about honor. Get gifts and give to the person. Yes. You can add gifts. See, you have to do something different from, let's see, one of the things I want you to know is under promise and over deliver. It's part of customer relation, customer and human relation, under promise and over deliver. One of the things I want to start doing for my weddings is that when I snap your, I'm going, when, I'm, when I'm going to charge you, you are not, for, for enlargement of the pre-wedding pictures, it's not going to be part of it. We are not enlarging pre-wedding, we are only enlarging the wedding, the white wedding and the traditional wedding. But on the day of your white wedding, I will come with an enlargement and give to you and say, this is my wedding present for you. They will be so surprised that, ah, uh -uh. so my, my photographer even gave me a gift. That day, they will make sure you eat. You know, some, some, some brides and grooms that we forget that the photographers, they are human beings, they will not give them food. That day, they will make sure you eat simply because you brought a gift for them. Just imagine as a caterer, maybe you are the one that baked the cake and you come with you know, a special package for them, something special for them. Maybe a little gift and you present it before the wedding will start, they will be happy. Under promise and over deliver. Under promise and over deliver. There's a client I did a job for. She asked for a photo book. And then, when I gave her the photo book, I added a, a table enlargement to it, a table frame to it. She was very excited that I added a table frame. And then, this client, I promised her a particular time, and I delivered before the time. Under promise and over deliver. So, if it's going to take you two days to deliver something, tell them three days. And when you deliver two days, they will be excited. Why? You under promise and you over delivered. Under promise and over deliver. You're going to give them 10 pictures, for example. Give them extra one. I'm not saying do, do this for all your clients. You might know the clients that will value it. You might know some clients that, you know, you might be able to shuffle it between different clients. But just, however, make sure you find a way to make, you know, to make your clients happy that they want to stay with you. When you make your clients happy and they stay with you, then your business will grow. Let people come and eat in your restaurant today and want to come again tomorrow. Then there has to be something different. There has to be something that they will get that, oh, they will want to come tomorrow. Some of you can, dis can develop a plan and say, oh, you can subscribe. Like there's something in Jara Market. When you subscribe for their Jara card, you get 10% discount from every, you know, you know, you get discount from every discount sales they are making. For example, you can tell your clients that you're going to get discounts if you refer these people to me, or you're going to get, get discount if you join my, you know, you might you may have any plan at all that people get discount. That if you are referring somebody to me, I will give you 100 naira or 200 naira for every client you refer. Just let them know. Just tell them to make me know that you are the one that referred them and I will credit you the money. Then they will be the one doing the publicity for you. So learn about customer relation. Learn how to keep your clients. 
Learn how to keep your clients coming back, coming back to you, to you. They will come back to you if you are developing and you are improving. They will come back to you if you, if you value them. Value them. See, I have clients online. Sometimes, like this corona period, I have to message and just say, uh, I'm just checking up for you. Hope, you are, hope you, are, you are staying safe. Just want to let you know that. You, you, I just said some few things. Let people know that you value them. Let people know that you value them. Not only on, you know, on the first of every month that you send message, broadcast message, that we just show that, yes, it's broadcast, happy new month. Sometimes you have to make sure that message is so personalized that when they read it, they will feel as though you, you, you were talking to them. You can make a call. You can send a text. Learn about customer. Some people like relationship because I told you that business is about relationship. Learn how to relate with people. Learn how to re see if if you're on somebody's mind, you will realize that that person will always contact you when the person has that kind of job. Don't just go blank. I told us yesterday, MTN, Glow, Etisalat, they still keep doing advertising now. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, they are still doing advertising now. For example, what concerns Pepsi and, uh, and, and shows? Do you know that Pepsi is making money from their shows too? They do shows, they bring big artists. Those artists, what do they do? They sign them. They are paying them monthly or paying them yearly. And those artists are doing publicity for them. And those artists will perform free for their show. And those shows, they will make money from the show. That's the reason for brand ambassadors. Do adverts, pay, pay for adverts on you know this still about marketing, pay for adverts, promotions, and don't, your promotions don't just do any other promotions, target people that need your service. Don't just go to Insta blog and put your materials and say, you know, Insta blog should promote it. No, look for your client, all right. So, but learn about customer relations, learn about you know customer care. Learn about how to talk to people. Some clients may call you, you know, at different times. Learn how you talk to them, how you, you know, you greet them, you answer them. You know, it is not making you a fool. No, you have to show clients because you, you have to show them that you value them. If you don't show them that you value them, you know, they will not want to patronize you. Do you understand my point? So, make sure you show them that you value them but you're not supposed to make sure you know you're not supposed to make it look as though you know they are supposed to boss over you but you get the point i'm just trying to share you know i may not be able to balance everything out but get what you can get and apply to your business